Does your girlfriend ever stress out when she catches you on Facebook Marketplace? Not because you're looking at something in specific to pick up, but more so because it tells her where your brain is at, right? Because in her mind, she looks outside, she's like, wow, we've got a nice yard, nice driveway, everything's nice and clean and organized. You look outside and you're like, hmm, I bet I could fit another project car in the driveway. So you jump on Marketplace and immediately start searching for what you wanna get your greasy little hands on. I understand you, but I need you to hear me out on one thing, right? When it comes to your project cars, there is a Goldilocks kind of like in the middle that you wanna be. If it's too nice, you're not gonna wanna butcher it up. And really what fun is that? And if it's too far gone, you're just gonna sink a bunch of resources into it, right? Time, money, and never really get any happiness back. You really wanna find a project that's like right in the middle. This is where I've introduced you to my newly acquired 2002 BMW 330i. Now, if you're familiar with E46 chassis, you would know the 330i is the fun one because it's got the bigger three liter inline six. Now, just a quick glance at this car, you will see that it is by no means in perfect condition. However, I picked this car up running and driving for 600 bucks, which in my opinion is a freaking steal because the last E46, I paid like four grand for. To only pay 600 for this one, I'm a happy camper. Now, let's go over some of the downsides of this car. First and foremost, a little bit of rust on the quarter panel. In typical E46 fashion, the window regulators have stopped working. And so the previous owner to try to keep the windows up has put tape on the windows, not the prettiest thing. And then probably my least favorite feature is that it is an automatic. But I have found out that automatics can be fun in the right vehicle because I went down to Detroit to pick this thing up, put it on a trailer, brought it back with my buddy Troy. And as soon as we got it off the trailer, immediately started doing burnouts with the car. She might be an automatic, but she is a certified ripper. And it's not all bad, right? Like whoever put these wheels on it, these are aftermarket wheels, maybe. I don't think these are BMW wheels. I've never seen them on another BMW, but whoever put these wheels on the car has excellent taste. One thing in particular though, that I am not a big fan of, while I have the hook in my hand, is these stupid bumper guards. Whoever decided to paint this blue, man? Come on, get out of there. Stop painting like random trim pieces in oddball colors that don't flow with the car. So now I gotta figure out, am I gonna paint these back to being black, try to pick up another set off of a donor car, or just leave it how it is. Right now I'm leaning towards leaving those off because it really doesn't look that bad, but one thing we certainly have to address are these regulators. Luckily this is such a common problem that you can get the parts relatively cheap. If you have an E46 with bad regulators, fix them. They're like 30 bucks on Amazon. This will be the driver's front, passenger front. We're gonna throw those in. So one thing I am concerned about, if you look on the back side of the glass, there's this little plastic tab. That's where the bolt goes through. There's not one on this side. Hopefully it's in the door. Not only that, but this wasn't bolted to the regulator whatsoever. So hopefully the bolts are in the door as well. No luck on that plastic tab inside the car. Now I'm hoping maybe the regulators will come with new ones. I would be really surprised, but you never know, right? That's gonna be kind of our saving grace. So as it turns out, no, the new regulator does not have those little plastic bushings, which is fantastic. A bit of bad news is nowhere in the car can I find another one of these little plastic bushings that hold the window to the regulator, like the glass itself. I can buy a new pack of four on Amazon for like 10 bucks and then wait a couple of days for shipping, which is more than likely what I'm gonna do because I went back and forth about, okay, what kind of band-aid solution could I come up with? And uh, that's not what we're about on this channel. We are about fixing things the right way. Well, fixing the right things the right way. And starting with little small things like this. So I guess the good news is that the regulator on this side is good. I misdiagnosed that. I guess I didn't really spend any time looking at it, but the problem is I rolled down the window and the window, like the glass, just dropped out of the regulator. And it's the same deal. There's no bolt holding the glass to the regulator. And then this side is just completely missing the bushing too. So at some point in this car's life, 
somebody took apart the regulators and the glass and the door, went through all that hassle, and then just didn't put it back together properly. Oh, <laughs> oh man. The stresses, guys. $600 cars, what are you gonna do? I'm still trying to evaluate the situation here a little bit, but let me show you what we got going on. So this is the new regulator. I ended up swapping and put the old one back in because it turns out it works fine. Just somebody took it apart and put it back together. So these are the bushings that go into these holes, right? All nifty and dandy. I figure at least I've got two of them. I can put one window back together and we'll worry about the other one later on. Downside is there's no other hardware. Based on other research I've done, there's supposed to be a bolt as well as a washer that sandwiches in the glass to the regulator. I don't have that. Oh, but don't worry, Jeffrey Bezos has got your back. They're on Amazon. So this is a breakdown of everything I need. I need four of these bolts. I need two, two packs of these nuts. And then I just need two of those, but they come in a four pack. For all these parts, my grand total is $95. It is cheaper to get regulators than the actual hardware. I'm still confused why these parts are missing to begin with, let alone trying to swallow having to pay $95 for a couple of nuts and bolts and little plastic bushings, but I guess that's BMW stuff for you. I will check back in with you guys in a few days when I've got this all situated. This was gonna be the part where I was excited to tell you I ordered all the OEM BMW stuff for those windows, like the glass to hold it into the door. But unfortunately, it's hard to be excited when every time I turn around, the battery on the car is dead. So I'm using my truck to give it a jump right now, and then we can throw the parts at it. The issue I seem to keep running into is this little hole here is where the nuts need to slide into, right? Unfortunately, they don't want to stay in place. As you can tell by the way, it just fell out. At this time, the best solution I can come up with is I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive from like a hot glue gun, stick it in there, and that'll hold it in place. And from there, I can drive the bolt through. It's just this little goofy thing doesn't want to lock in place. Never mind, it actually clips in from the other side. Rookie mistake. Oh, fing shatter. Shatter for me. Did you go all the way up? It actually wants to work now. That's nice. So we got one victory. I'm actually really surprised the window just didn't shatter. That would have made my night. Ugh, I tell you. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of the passenger side, get that window working. I've got the glass over here on the bench. Put the door panels back in. Give me like five minutes. I'll bring you guys back. Five minutes later. I gotta show you this because I'm so freaking stoked. Because I've been looking at this car for like the past week with no glass in it and it's been stressing me out. And to finally have it all sorted makes me very happy. Check it out. So that switch. Oh yeah. And then driver switch, which you already know, you already seen that. But it's the little things, guys. Don't be afraid to celebrate even the smallest victories because at the end of the day, that's what's gonna make your heart feel whole. So if you do accomplish small, silly little things like getting the windows to work on your car, go ahead and pat yourself on the back. You deserve it. Now, the one thing I think we can all agree that this car is in desperate need of is some window tint. So let's take care of that. Oh, man. I love when a plan comes together nicely. Now what I did on this one is just a nice, clean, simple 20% tint, both front and rear, back glass got done as well. I did clean it up a little bit too, cause like I said, the car hadn't been washed in a very, very long time. And uh, also even threw the little guards back on because leaving those gaping holes just wasn't gonna work. And this is the look on it for now. I mean, we do have to address the elephant in the room, which is going to be that I did not tint the windshield uh, because it is cracked. So I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I don't know if I'm gonna replace the windshield or just let it slide, we'll find out in the future. But we also have to address this quarter panel. Now, 
Part of me is on the fence about what to do with this, whether I should just cut all this nonsense out and try to just like weld up a patch panel. I know it's not gonna look nearly as good as the OEM piece would, but we for sure gotta get it to look better than what it is now. I mean, really that's the only little bit of ugliness on the car, so if we can clean that up, this car would actually look pretty fresh. Now I do hate to do this, but I realize that my longer videos don't perform as well. And well, the goal is here to try to appease to the algorithm. So I'm gonna try to make this video five or six minutes long, which means that we are done for today. We have done all the transformation that there is to do in this current episode. If you've made it this far and you're not a subscriber, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Obviously, if you've made it this far into the video, you don't hate the video, so hit the thumbs up or the like button as well. Any questions, comments, or concerns you have about this E46, leave it down in the comment section below. 